Hi everybody, I just want to do a very quick video example on how to use the array structure inside our Scratch programs. So I'm going to do a few little videos just to get the basics of array structures and basic operations working inside Scratch, okay? So for the example that I'm going to do, it'll be similar enough to some of the basics that we'll need for our project. So I want to be able to create an array that has 20 random letters contained within it. I want to be able to pick three of the random letters uh, from my array structure and store them into a different array. So to be able to perform my basic array operations, I need to create an array. So I go to data and I make a list. So uh, for you should give your array structure a meaningful name. So I'm going to call my one letters. Okay. And there it appears. So you can see it over on the left hand side um, beside the cat. And it's saying letters. And it's empty. So there's a number of different ways that we can populate our data structure. So you can see here there's a little plus symbol. And I can use this if I want to add information to my array structure. So I can click it. A, B, and so on and so forth. So if I, if that's one way. If I have a lot of letters and I want to automatically populate them by magic, I can create a text file that contains my letters. So, so I'm saying 20 letters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Fine, so I'm going to save this to my computer somewhere. File, I'm going to say save as, and I'll just drop it straight into my documents folder called letters. Oh, sugar, I'll take cap blocks off. I'll just call it L E T T E R S and enter. Fine, so there are my letters. So I can come back to Scratch. See if I see letters here, the grey box. If I right click it, I can import. I go into Documents and I'm going Letters. So select the letters text file. Ah, magic. There are my letters. So I didn't have to manually input them. So 20 is not too bad. But what would happen if you had 99 letters? So it could be a very clever way to pre-populate your data, okay? So fine. There be Step one. So there are my letters. Fine. So let's just, okay, so we'd start with the basics. So I'm going to kick my program off. Go and click. Now, if I wanted to be able to perform some upper operations on my structure here, let's say I want to print out all of the letters in my structure. Okay, well, if I wanted to print out all of the letters, that are in my letters array, I could use a loop. Okay, so let's see if we can use a loop for this and we put some structure to it. So repeat until. So we have different options. So I'm going to go for repeat until. Okay, so the condition, so it's a loop. I'm going to have a counter, so I'll have a variable somewhere, and I'm going to repeat until my counter is equals to the length of my letters or greater than so whichever way I want to operate on it so if I'm going to operate a loop I'm going to need a counter so make a variable counter okay set counter to zero so we initialize and I will repeat until And I'm going to say, so this is going to be my repeat condition. So let's get some operators in. Repeat until. And I'm going to say, I want to repeat until counter is greater than 20. That means I would have visited everyone in my structure. Repeat until counter is greater than 20. So we're statically putting the 20 in. I will change this in a few minutes, okay? So 
So I'm going to bring in my block, say counter for one second. Okay, so this is a simple loop going from 0 up to 20, and I'm going to get the cat to say the number. So repeat until counter is greater than 20 and I want to iterate the whole way around and I need to increment my counter as I go okay oh sugar okay let the cat go one and off he goes so he'll go up as far as 20 hopefully so maybe we let him off so uh, seeing is believing so it can be good just to see things working sometimes and then try and understand how we can use what we have to, s to solve our larger problem okay okay so there's the cat counting to 20 now a lot of the, f the array structures that we have seen in our flowcharts all started counting at zero so that's why we've set counter to zero but if you look over here on the left hand side our array or our lists in Scratch start counting at one. So we can't really start operating at zero. We're gonna to have to change that to one. So the cat will start counting at one now if I let him off again. So one, two, three, that's brilliant. So now instead of saying the number out this time, I wonder could I get the cat to say the letter that's actually stored here. So let's see what we have here for operating on our array structures. So see there's one here, item, and it seems to have the first, the last, or random of letters. This is the one I'm interested in. So I'm going to take out counter. So item one of letters is A. Item two of letters is F. Counter is going from one up to 20. So each time we start iterating through our loop we can go item counter of letters and that will access the information in our structure so counter starts at one and goes up to 20. so if i click my letter now now the cat's going to literally access or display the letters back out to us and you can see over on the left it's visiting each piece of data one by one that's perfect so by using loops I'm able to manipulate the basic data that's stored in a given structure and depending what I want to do with it I can basically just change my code block in here I could have asked the cat to ask us to think of a letter and I could have looped through the structure here to see if the letter that the user entered is actually in this list and on it goes so that actually might be a good example just before we push it off any further. Let's say, let's break up what we have. So I keep the counter with the loop. We'll leave him there. Okay. So let's say I want to sensing ask. I'm going to ask the user uh, think can you guess a letter oh sugar L E T T E R can you guess a letter in my list? Okay, so cat's gonna ask the user can they guess a letter that we have over here in our list? Okay, fine. Whatever input the user enters, it's really easy. We store it in a variable. Make variable, yeah, we call it user underscore guess set user guess to answer excellent so now inside user guess 
I should have a letter. Now, ideally, we should validate a lot of our stuff, but that's a different problem and that we'll look at this a little bit further on down the line. We'll assume that the user is going to play ball and enter something correctly. So I'm going to leave this disconnected just yet. So can you guess a letter in the list? Yeah, of course I can. I'm going to guess A. Okay, and you can see here, user guess now holds A. Okay, perfect. Now I have a loop. So I want to go through the information one by one and if I found if we'll take these out if the letter is in the list I'm going to say uh, congratulations you guessed correctly and if not we'll keep on looping okay so this is a decision so we come back to control so it's an if then else so if something is equals to something okay so what's the something we're interested in is the user's guess equals to the letter or is it actually in the list here now we have two ways of doing it I'm just going to do this via a loop we can check if letters contains something here and that will evaluate as boolean true or false but we'll just use the loop just to see us how we can actually iterate over something to solve a given problem so I'm going to say if user guess is equals to so we're looping through something one by one visiting visiting each letter so if the user's guess is equals to one of these letters as we go through them one by one by one by one we are going to get the cat to say G R E A T. Great guess. So if they guess it, we'll say great guess. Else we can do something else. I don't know what the else might be yet, but we'll leave them sit. So say uh, great guess. And if not, then we've guessed in correctly so we haven't really built the logic of it up yet but just to see can we do that, that simple comparison anyway so oh yeah we need to careful where we put our things okay can you guess a letter in my list i am going to guess letter h it's telling me great guess so i've got it correct Let's see, can I find a letter that's not in here? Uh, X doesn't appear to be here, so run again. X. And we've come true, and we haven't got a great guess, which means it hasn't actually triggered. So the user has guessed X, but X isn't in the list. So I'm able to loop through my information here and do some basic comparisons. So this can be a powerful way to be able to compare some information in our structure. So it's a very basic example. So I'm just giving you the idea of how you can actually loop through something to perform some basic operations. So the plan is I'm gonna do a good few of these videos to demonstrate how certain things can work within Scratch, predominantly some of the feature stroke functionality that probably should be included in your CA. Guys, I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.